Susan wandered aimlessly around the empty house, unable to come to her senses. A couple of days ago, her 20 years strong marriage had come to an end, along with the death of her husband, Nick. The worst part was that he died so unexpectedly. He suddenly felt unwell and passed away in just two days, and the cause was trivial appendicitis. Nick was not used to complaining about his health. He had always been a robust and strong man, always ready to help those who needed it, and his personal interests were always the last priority. Maybe that's why he didn't pay attention to the pain that repeatedly came to him and got worse and worse. It was stupid, but that's exactly who Nick was. That's exactly the way he remained in Susan's memory. But that wasn't the worst part. Susan was tormented by the fact that despite her strong love for her husband, she couldn't cope with the fact that she was accompanying him on his last journey with the deepest resentment. God, why is this happening to me? Why? She said to herself for the upteenth time. Susan dialed her friend's number and asked her to visit her. I need to talk to you, Stacy. I'm just going crazy. I don't know what to do. Go ahead, I'm listening. She eagerly joined the dialogue. No, this conversation needs to be face to face. Come over tonight, I'll be waiting for you. As soon as Stacy appeared, Susan sat her down on the couch and then held out an envelope containing a note and some pictures. What is it? Her friend wondered. It's a letter from Nick to his mistress, Monica. Can you imagine? And she's not just a mistress, she's the mother of his daughter. Stacy, how am I supposed to live with this? Susan couldn't stand it and cried, covering her face with her hands. Stacy began to comfort her, but she herself could not believe that Nick was such a despicable cheater and even had a child outside of the marriage. She constantly put him as an example to her husband, as a model family man. When Susan calmed down a little, Stacy opened the envelope and pulled out the pictures one of which was a young, beautiful girl hugging Nick, and he was holding a little girl and smiling. Other pictures showed the same girl and her daughter laughing, posing for an unseen photographer, and there was a note in Nick's handwriting. Monica, I still can't believe how lucky I am to have met you. You and Lizzie are so amazing. I miss you so much, and I shall come very soon. In the meantime, as promised, I have printed out the pictures and I'm sending them to you in a letter. Hugs. Kiss Lissy for me. Your Nick. My goodness, said Stacy, after reading the short letter. I can't believe my eyes. And I never would have believed it if someone else had told me about that. What are you going to do, Susan? Honestly, I don't know. I just have no idea. I mean, sure, I'd heard that long-distance truckers have families in every city, but I never thought my Nick would turn out to be one of those. And the most important thing is that it doesn't matter to him anymore. And I, knowing about that, have to suffer with these thoughts for the rest of my life. How am I supposed to live? Stacy, can you tell me? I don't know, her friend shrugged. Try to find a man. This way you can get revenge on him, sort of. You're still young. You're only 40 now. You might even have a baby. No, Stacy, I can't have a baby. And that's Nick's fault as well. He and I were young and stupid. He kept dreaming of starting a business, wanting to get rich before he could have kids. And I, like a fool, believed him. I got pregnant three times, and each time my husband wanted me to get rid of the baby. The last abortion was very difficult for me. I almost died. Meanwhile, Nick had gone bankrupt. Bad luck in business. So we'd lost absolutely everything we had invested. He even had to sell my parents' apartment. Mom was living with us back then. No need to tell you. You know all about it. Nick had been looking for work for a long time until a friend advised him to become a trucker. He was afraid at first, but then he got used to it. Life became more or less normal, but I never got pregnant again. I remember him saying he wanted his children to grow up wealthy. He got wealth, but we never got kids. You're the lucky one. You have three. So what does that mean? Said Stacy, thinking. Each time he forced you to get rid of the baby, and when he realized you couldn't get pregnant anymore, he decided to have a baby outside of the marriage? It turns out that way, Susan sighed. 
you know, if I were you, I'd go over there to her, you know, to that Monica. The address is on the envelope. I'd tear all her hair out without leaving a single hair on her head, so she'd understand that she shouldn't have a relationship with someone else's husband. It's a long drive, about five hours by bus. Well, for a case like this, it's worth it. No, I'm not going anywhere, Susan replied, devastated. There's no point, and it's too late. Nick isn't with us anymore anyway. I mean, who do I have to prove anything to? There's no one to get revenge on. Stacy just shrugged her shoulders. They talked for a long time discussing the situation. Then Stacy went home, and Susan, after thinking for a while, suddenly began to pack her bags for the trip to Monica's early in the morning. She didn't know why she was doing that. She just felt it was the right thing to do. The sun was already high when Susan walked up to Monica's house, wondering at the small village with its narrow streets. She had no trouble finding the right house, thinking, not without gloating, that it was very small, unattractive, and even decrepit. The blackened log walls, the old porch long since repaired, the heavy shutters on the windows, Susan had never imagined that people could live in such terrible conditions. But at that moment, the same little girl who had been in the picture with Nick ran out of the door, followed by Monica, whom Susan immediately recognized. Monica was surprised to see the woman standing at the gate, and greeted her with a friendly hello, and invited her in. You're here to see me, aren't you? Come in. Let me just take a bucket of apples. I picked them this morning. They are so sweet. I'll give you some. Do you have any idea who I am? Asked Susan. No. Monica looked up at her in wonder. I'm Nick's wife. Susan was expecting anything. Tears, screams, embarrassment, maybe even insults, but not a joyful exclamation. Oh, really? This is so wonderful. I've wanted to meet you for a long time. My name is Monica. You know my name? The woman wondered. Of course. Nick speaks very highly of you. Where is he? Hasn't he come? He died, Susan said quietly, not quite understanding what was going on. The bucket fell from Monica's hands with a clatter, and the apples scattered all over the porch. Monica's daughter shuddered and rushed to her mother, and she, covering her face with her hands, sobbed bitterly, sitting on the unpainted boardwalk. It took a while for Monica to cope with the explosion of grief that washed over her head. I see you loved him very much, Susan told her bitterly when the girl pulled herself together, and, pale with an instantly swollen face, rose to take her guest into the house after all. Thank you for coming to tell me this, Monica said, sobbing, as she seated Susan at the kitchen table and served it with tea. I've been waiting for him, waited so long. I thought it was important for you to know, Susan grinned. You have a daughter growing up. She has a right to know what happened to her father. He was going to give this to you. Susan handed the girl the envelope she had shown to Stacy. Father? Monica asked again, and suddenly her hands spluttered. My God, do you think I'm Nick's mistress? There was nothing between us. You don't understand. Nick was like, well, like a father, like an uncle or an older brother. I loved him. I'll always love him as my closest or maybe even my only relative. Nick was always faithful to you. He was the most faithful husband. He couldn't live any other way. How could you doubt in him? She took the envelope from Susan's hands, looking at the pictures, and began her story. And Susan, sitting opposite her, forgot about the tea Monica had served her, and listened with her eyes wide open. I was born into a family that didn't need me at all. My mother was a heavy drinker. She didn't know who got her pregnant. She had four children. Out of all of them, I was the only one who survived. My older brother died in prison three years ago, and is buried somewhere in an unnamed cemetery. There was also a brother and a sister who died before they were three years old. My mother drank as if she didn't even notice whether we were alive in this world or not. Poverty, cold, hunger, I experienced it all from a very young age. Sometimes I even went to my neighbors to beg, to ask for some food. The food they gave me was the only food I ate. I also tried to take it to my sister and brothers. I can't even think of those times without shuddering. I think you realize that I learned what men were like when I was a teenager. My mother began to drink so much that I couldn't stand it and ran away from home. And to make some money for food, I decided to sell my body. That's how I existed. 
Someone would feed me somewhere I could bathe, somewhere I could sleep. That was my happiness. One day a truck stopped by the road. The driver got out of the cabin and started inspecting the wheels. I went over to him. I was very hungry. I hadn't eaten anything in almost two days. Well, I thought everything was going to be as usual. But he looked at me and really sat me down in the cabin. And you can imagine, he just fed me. And when, out of habit, I wanted to thank him in the only way available to me, he took my hands off him and suddenly started talking to me, asking me about my life. And I burst into tears and told him all about my life and that I was expecting a baby too. Oh, Susan, if it hadn't been for your husband, I might not even be alive by now. And he was so kind, you know. He took me with him on the trip. He bought me some normal clothes, took me to the doctor, fed me, and he didn't ask for anything in return, unlike the others. He was also always talking about you and that you didn't have children. He blamed himself for it and worried a lot, said that he loved you and asked me not to repeat his mistakes. I believed him. You know, it was as if I realized that there were different people and a different kind of life. Nick helped me with that. I told him I had an old house, but it was falling apart. Then Nick would come by and fix it up. He was the one who picked me up from the maternity hospital. And then he took care of us all the time and loved my daughter. He was my friend, Susan. He was my best friend. If someone had told me to die for him, I wouldn't hesitate. But he died first. Monica cried again. But why? Why didn't he tell me anything about you and your daughter? Susan wondered. He was going to tell you everything, but he was afraid you'd get mad at him. You know, Nick introduced me to his friend. He's a builder and also a very good person, just like your husband. We've been dating for six months now. Now he went home to tell his parents about our marriage, but he'll be back soon. Nick was going to tell you all about it at our wedding. Well, Susan, you have no idea how I feel. It's as if I'd lost both of my parents and him. But please don't think that I was still working as, you know, as a, you know... I stopped doing it right away, and I never pulled any money out of Nick. No, absolutely not. He did help me at first, but now I'm working in a sewing shop, making my own money. Susan looked closely at Monica and realized that this girl was not lying to her about anything. Monica, I'm glad I came to see you. I really thought you were my husband's mistress. It was really hard to realize that, but I feel much better now. And thank you so much for that. We'll never see each other again. I'm going to sell the apartment and leave for good. I want to go back to my homeland. And I want to ask you to visit Nick's grave once in a while, so he won't think everyone has forgotten him. Of course. I'll never forget Nick, and I'll definitely visit him. Don't worry about that. Susan stayed with Monica for a long while, and then she said goodbye and went home. And Monica took her daughter in her arms and cuddled her giving her kisses.